Victor Davis Hansen joins me now. Victor, welcome to the show. Are schools finally starting to Thank reject you. these far left ideas like DEI? Is the pendulum swimming the right, swinging the right way? Gradually, gradually. I think a lot of universities are going to bring back the SAT in the fall. There's been an epidemic of DEI czars that have plagiarized. We saw the sad testimony of those college presidents. The disruption on campus has a subtext to it. It's not just that we have a lot of foreign students, but we have a lot of students by the university's prior standards of just three or four years ago, they would not have been admitted. And they've been admitted without SAT scores or comparative rankings of GPAs. And they're very unhappy and they have to either uh, add new courses or cut down the workload or, as in Yale's case, give 80% of the people A's. So I don't think the universities think it worked. I think their reputation has been harmed irrevocably and they're scrambling before they start to see a bigger fall off in the annual giving. Do you ever think we'll see the day when uh, liberal arts students are no, no longer socialist en masse? <laughs> That's a stretch, as speaking as a liberal arts student and as a professor of classical languages, <laughs> but uh, Sorry. I, I, I don't know. But I, I do think what can't go on won't go on. And, and you can't ask these students to accumulate a quarter million dollars in debt with no job opportunities. And then they're not even poorly, they're not even acquainted with literature or analytics or reasoning anymore, critical thinking. It's mostly indoctrinization. So when they leave these universities, sometimes half of them don't get degrees. The employers, institutions, bureaucracies, they're pretty disappointed in the product that comes out of these places. It'll stop when parents start to uh, realize that they're chucking their money away, I think. I'm going to change the subject, Victor. The administration is moving forward yeah. with a plan to send a billion dollars worth of weapons and ammo to Israel. Is this a shift in Biden's policy towards Israel? No. He, he assumes we have no collective memory, Stuart. So one week he's going to re resume aid and then he'll cut it and then appeal to the Michigan Arab American constituencies. And then when they get complacent, he'll go back to the Israel and he thinks that we don't have any memory of what he's doing. It's part of also a larger strategy in lieu of a, of a, of a real agenda that people liked or felt worked for them of pandering to particular groups. Uh, auto workers this week with EV tariffs uh, drain the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, tell Ukrainians not to hit Russian oil facilities, cancel student loans, jawbone their Fed to lower ta uh, their rates before the election. The whole theory is that he can't appeal to us as a people, so he targets particular groups in particular states and assumes that we don't know what he's doing. That and waging lawfare against Donald Trump, outsourcing his campaign to the media, all of that is in lieu of a strategy that counts on personal appearances, campaign, and confidence in what he's achieved the last three years of which he doesn't have any. I sometimes feel that things are falling apart. And you've got a new book out, and the they title are. is The End of Everything. Mm -hmm. Is my premise, things are falling apart, part of the book? Well, part of it is it's to try to warn people that looking at historical examples from the past that Naivete, reliance on past glory, that's no substitute for military deterrence, economic strength, and a realization that there's people outside your walls that want to erase you and destroy you. And there were a lot of contemporary parallels I found in the epilogue of that book. And the book is out, and it's called The End of Everything, Wars Descend into Annihilation. That's an interesting title, Victor, and I shall read it. Thanks so much for joining us. Come back soon. Victor Davis Hansen. Thank you, sir. Thank you.